Okay, FAQ number 56. What about Gail Ripplinger? Uh, a lot of the new version perverts, the Alexandrian perverts, like to say that Gail has been debunked over and over again, even by King James only men and all this stuff, and she's just a crazy nut and everything else, and, and all of her research is ridiculous, and you shouldn't even listen to anything that she says. Uh, I don't think so. Um, I have just a small little sampling here of books that Gail wrote. Uh, I have, I think, just about everything that she has ever written. I have all the different videos that she was in. And um, Gail Ripplinger was the, one of the first, um, you, know, that, you know, people that really helped me to get into ministry. Uh, she was the first one to sell uh, my video from NIV to KJV, uh, the old, old one. And then I revised it. She's just been a real um, source of encouragement to me over the years, and I really do appreciate her. I think she's one of the finest women of God out there. Uh, very meek, humble spirit. And uh, But I understand why she gets attacked. Because, you see, she committed the quote-unquote unpardonable sin uh, for these Alexandrian pervert, perverts, for, for them, you know, for their system, the thing that they did not want to come out. And that is that she tied together the occult with the new version issue. They don't like that. You see, because many of the Alexandrian perverts are into naturalistic textual criticism. You don't know what that means? Watch the FAQ number 54. I looked down at my list here. Uh, these guys don't believe in supernatural things. It's just all just books and books and translation and proper words and blah, blah. They don't see the spiritual aspect of it. And Gail Ripplinger, in this book, New Age Bible Versions, she tied in these many of these changes in these new versions with the occult world, the Luciferians, like uh, Madame Blavatsky of the Theos Theosophical Society. And she shows where these New Agers, Alice Bailey, Madame Blavatsky, a lot of these people, they have certain philosophies, and these philosophies are creeping into these new versions. And, you know, it's right there. And people say, oh, yes, but we've proved that the, the problems, you know, I'll tell you a little story here just to kind of illustrate my point. Uh, there was this one hireling at a Catholic church I used to go to, Mount Zion Baptist Church, and uh, this uh, Terry, can't think of what his last name was now, but he was the assistant pastor there. And I said something about Gail Ripplinger, and he was like, oh, yeah, well, I, we, don't, we don't believe in what she is because David Cloud, you know, brother David Cloud has debunked her and stuff. And I said, uh, what part of her book did he debunk? He said, well, pretty much the whole thing. I said, okay, what about page uh, 219? And he looks at me, he goes, huh? I said, page 219, what about the information on page 219? Or how about uh, page uh, 313 or, or 402 or, or whatever? And he's just like, huh? And I said, um, did he debunk everything on every page? I said, did you, first of all, did you read the book? No. Why not? Well, David Cloud told, you know, he debunked it, so I didn't bother reading it. Well, okay, yeah, that's, that's smart. But uh, I said, did he debunk every single point that she ever made? See, again, these naturalistic textual criticism type of people, they have this philosophy that if you can debunk a couple points in the book, then you throw out the rest of the book. That's how they handle the Bible, you see. If you can prove a few inconsistencies and translational errors in the King James Bible, then you can throw out the whole thing, right? You see the men mentality of these people? And by the way, you know, Gail has answered all these critics. You know, there's other books and things. I think the Blind Guides, you know, things, she answered a lot of these, you know, attacks on her book here. But the fact of the matter is, even if you can say, well, she was wrong in 10 quotes in the book, what about the other hundreds of pages? And let me tell you how I came to get this copy of this book. Way back when I first got into the Bible version issue, I heard about this thing, and I heard of all the controversy back and forth. And I actually was going to another Baptist church at the time, Cornerstone Baptist, and one of the deacons uh, knew that I was getting into the Bible version issue, and he handed me a whole thing uh, rebutting this book, saying that this book was wrong. And I thought, well, okay. I'm going to read Gail's book first, and then I'll read this 
whole thing debunking her book. So I had a whole collection of new versions at that time. And because it, you know, from my past lost life using these new versions. And so I just started, I read her book from cover to cover and I'd go through and it'd say, you know, like here on page 289, my kingdom is not of this realm here in John 18, verse 36 in the NIV and NASB at all. In other words, and others is what that means. King James Bible says, my kingdom is not of this world. New versions say realm. King James says world. And so what I started to do is I started to go through there and I started to, okay, and I'd put the book down. I remember I'd take a bookmark and I'd stick it in there and I'd, I'd look up in my NIV and I'd get my King James Bible and I'd look it up and I'd say, whoa, she's right. It does say that. And I looked up every single reference that she had in there. And I began to see, you know what, there is a conspiracy here. There is a satanic conspiracy. I mean, why would you have, you know, all of these verses being changed that, you know, the new versions go softer on Roman Catholicism. They definitely are producing an Antichrist spirit and Antichrist, you know, groups of people. You know, the churches that begin to use the new versions, all of a sudden the whole spirit changes. You get a, these King James Bible using church buildings and they start to use the new versions and all of a sudden everything falls apart. They bring in the rock music. They bring in the whole one world, you know, philosophy. And so, you know, I read her book and it's like, wow, this stuff works out. And then I started to look at these quotes from these guys, you know, that supposedly debunked her book. And I started to see that their arguments against her just weren't holding up. And they talk about, well, she, she misquoted, she took uh, the words of Westcott and Hort out of, out of context and things like this. And I actually looked it up and I got the photo scanned images of the whole Westcott and Hort's, you know, life and letters of Westcott and, and, and also then of Hort. And it's in my, you know, video, the real Bible version issue exposed. And I show this, the actual pages, the actual quotes. Nobody's taking, you know, redoing their quotes or anything. I mean, these guys were heretics. She quotes that in her book here. And these new versionists just, exp you know, they kind of think that, oh, well, nobody out there is actually going to see the quotes, so we'll just, you know, say that Gail misquoted Westcott and Hort, and most people aren't going to look it up, so they'll just believe us. And that's unfortunately what most people do. You know, and so I saw that thing, and I, and I like I said, I asked this, this assistant pastor, and I said, you know, how is it that you can overthrow the whole book because of a few little quotes here and there where these people are questioning her? And of course, you know, I asked him, do you believe that there is a New Age conspiracy here to destroy the Bible? Well, and I don't believe in conspiracy. That's the whole issue. That's why there's so much uh, animosity towards Gail Ripplinger. Okay, they can't get her for her attitude because she's not like... Ruckman. Ruckman's very abrasive and things like that. You know, he'll call people stupid or whatever else and people get offended at that. So they'll attack Ruckman over his speech, but they can't use that on Gail Ripplinger because she's very sweet and very nice and very humble. So they say, well, she's a conspiracy theorist or whatever else. And they'll try to throw out her books uh, based on a few quotes that they don't agree with. But nobody has ever come close to answering this whole book. And they never will. They can't. So uh, if you want to study this issue and really get an in-depth knowledge of this issue, I highly recommend Gail Replinger's books, all of them, and all of her videos. And people come along and tell you, you know, oh, well, she's been debunked in things. No, she hasn't. No, she has not. Like I said at the beginning, the problem with Gail Replinger is she ties the new versions in with the Luciferian New Age conspiracy that's bringing about the New World Order. And you talk to these new versionists, they don't even believe in that. So that's the issue with Gail Ripplinger.